you can't pipe without spending money. The good news about a chanter is it will be 10 years before it's obsolete. Right. So like maybe, I think you maybe need to think of it that way, right? And I do think that's a good way to think about it. So like my chanter, my G1 chanter is going to cost me 150 bucks. Okay, so that's $15 a year, right? Think of it that way, right? So you invest in the chanter and it's 15 bucks a year to have a really nice chanter. Mm -hmm. And then 10 years from now, it'll be time for a new one. And then the same with the drone reads, but it's probably a shorter time span. Like, so a, a set of drone reads, synthetic drone reads, it'll be three years before you probably need a new set, right? So like, you know, set of easy drones is 90 bucks. So that's 30 bucks a year for your drone reads. That's just the way that it is. And then chanter reads, maybe you go through two or three a year. So, you know, but that's kind of the other way. So, you know, I buy a chanter read for 20 bucks. And that's going to last me, let's call it four months. So that's 60 bucks a month for your chanter read. And then the pipe bag, right? If you are actually genuinely poor, you want to buy a Bannatine uh, because you're going to spend, what is it? 200 bucks for a good Bannatine, right? Mm -hmm. But then the Bannatine can last you five to 10 years. So you can divide that in, but you, you kind of need to think of it that way, which is, uh, you know, you kind of have to divide the lifespan into the price. And then you'll find that, you know, actually playing your bagpipes, if you're actually serious about playing, you'll find that it costs, I don't know, 500 bucks a year to maintain your instrument. And then you go out and get two gigs, pay you 250 bucks each, and you've paid for your habit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, so. no, that's a great point. And, the, and then the same will go for instruction. Like it's the same mentality I would take towards instruction, which is, you know, don't get private. This is what people think I say, which I don't, but don't get private instruction unless you are well prepared for that lesson. Right. And if so, you'll find private instruction is uh, an adequate bang for the buck, you know, but don't get weekly lessons folks. If you, if you don't have time to play your pipes, except for once a week, like private lessons, really bad idea. Right, it's a waste of money. Yeah. So, but mean so, and, and then meanwhile, if you are the type of person that practice like that, that religiously goes home the night after the lesson and puts in an hour on the stuff that your teacher taught you, and then another hour the next day, and then maybe you take a day off, but then it's like another hour and another hour and another hour, then you're the type of person who can justify getting private instruction. But those people are rare. Right. So what I really, you know, I think what I would really recommend just from like a, just a budgetary standpoint is like, you know, um, find and, you know, a dojo is a great dojo is $1 a day for our premium. Right. So if, if your practice sessions are worth a dollar a day, then that's the right investment for you. I think the average dojo you member probably needs to you know, be a member and then find private instruction once a month, let's say. Maybe a two-hour lesson with a guru once a month. And then like that, that's like a good balance, I think, for everyone. But I made up my own kind of topic there and I jammed on it, which is like piping costs money, but it doesn't cost insane amounts if you think about it the right way. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Have a... Uh, have a Dave Ramsey envelope for piping, you know? So when I get gigs, this is what I tell people. Like, let's say you want me to play a gig. It's $300 for me to do the gig or $225 if you can pay me in cash, right? So then I get my two, you know, most people are like, oh, cash is no problem. Save a lot of money. Uh, I don't have to pay tax on that money. Whoops, did I say that on there? Okay, I don't have to pay tax on that money. It goes in my bag piping envelope. This isn't actually true anymore, but before I owned a bagpipe business, right? It would go in the envelope. And then now that 225 bucks, maybe I'd do a gig a couple times a month and that's my bagpipe envelope. So mm -hmm. it keeps me operating at even keel. And then maybe you have a second envelope where 20% of everything you put in the main envelope goes in that one. And then over a, you know, three or four years, you get a thousand bucks built up in that. And that, that's your down payment on your new pipes you always wanted. 